Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for tonight again. Thank you. Another night of being in your presence. Amen. Father in heaven, we're not tired of coming into your presence. Amen. Because in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. And tonight, Lord, that fullness of joy shall be our portion. Amen. And it will be evident for all our friends and our well wishers to see Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let tonight be like the night of Joseph that slept in the prison and woke up the next day and he found himself on the throne. Amen. And he never came back to that prison. Father, we are asking, Lord, that tonight will be like that night of Amen. Joseph in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father in heaven, we are asking, O oh Lord, in this platform, in this revival prayer movement, Amen. Father, through our faith, corporate faith, Lord, we will move our blessings that are hanging in the spirit realm. We will move them into reality, Lord, which Amen. will be evident for everyone to see in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Unto God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we ask or think, according to his power that is working in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God, our God is an able God. Our Amen. God is not a disabled God. Amen. Our God is all powerful. And I'm okay. trusting God that tonight, God Almighty, He will prove Himself to us as an able God in the name of Jesus. Amen. And every prayer request that we shall pray tonight, every prayer point that we shall bring before Him tonight, Amen. our God who is able to do far beyond what we are going to say or even think that God will answer us speedily in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, last Thursday, we consider two benefits of Easter. And just to, uh, to remind us, we said Easter is an event where we celebrate the death the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we said that, and we said that Easter ought to be celebrated on a daily basis. Not only just once in a year. We said Easter should be celebrated on a daily basis. In fact, Christmas, which is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Easter should be celebrated every day of our lives. We should be remembering that Jesus came to this world over 2,000 years ago, and that same Jesus, for your sake, for my sake, he went to the cross, he shed his blood, he died on the cross, and he was carried away from the cross, put in the grave, and on the third day, he rose again. And Amen. he rose after rising from the grave, he now ascended to heaven. Right now, he is seated with the Almighty God in majesty, awaiting yes. when our Father God will now commission him to come and take charge of this planet Earth. So last Thursday, we considered two benefits of Jesus' death barrier and resurrection. As a recap, one of the benefits that we highlighted last Thursday was through the death and the barrier 
and resurrection of Jesus, we said we now have two Testament Bible. That is, the death of Jesus made us to have two Testaments, two covenants. The Old Testament Bible and the New Testament Bible. And the word Testament means covenant. Covenant. And the second benefit that we also highlighted, we said through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, we now have a new life, a new identity, Amen. a new ID. And we saw that in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, which says that if any man be in Christ, if any man, if any woman, whether a young man or a young woman, whether a boy or a girl, whether an old man or an old woman, whether illiterate or educated, whether African or European, regardless the status of that person, as long as he is in Christ Jesus, as long as he is in Christ, he is in Christ Jesus, we are told that that person becomes a new creature, Amen. a new creature. And we said that, it, that what Jesus Christ came to accomplish for us is not, being, is not refurbishment, not reformation. Yeah. No, it didn't say that if we are in Christ, we are being refurbished. No. You know, when, when we go to Europe or to, or to the Western world, we we'll go there to buy a used car. When we bring it to Nigeria, what do we do? We take it to people that they will refurbish it, they will paint it, they will check the engine, repair the engine, and then you know change some spare parts. I mean, change some parts. And then after changing some parts, then the next thing is it will not look new. That is refurbishment. But no. When Christ, when, Christ, when Christ died for us, and you and I, when we give our life to Christ by repenting of our sins and accepting Jesus Christ into our life as our Lord and personal Savior, we are not refurbished. We are not reformed, but we are a new creature, a new species. You know, a new species. We are, we, we are being changed from being a sinner to be, being a saint, a saint. That is exactly what we discussed last week, Thursday. And that is God giving us a new life, not a refurbished life, not a reformed life, but rather a transformed life, which we call metamorphosis, metamorphosis, a, a, you know, a metamorphosed life, you know, a metamorphosed life. That is the kind of life that our Father God uh, gave, to, uh, gave to us. So, and that is what we discussed last uh, Thursday. So, but for today, we will continue from where we stop. So, number three benefit of the death and the, uh, and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that we are being free from every condemnation. We are being free from every sin and its consequences. We are being free. We have freedom from sin and all its consequences, such as sickness, poverty, stagnation, etc. Before Christ came, we were living in sin. And because we were living in sin, we were also being faced with the consequences of sin. When God created man, God did not create man to go through pain and sorrow. The Bible made us understand that everything that God created, they were all beautiful. Beautiful. And God put man in, in the Garden of Eden. Very beautiful garden. 
and God made everything okay for man. But along the line, Satan struck. And when Satan struck, what happened? Man fell. And when man fell, death came. Separation from, uh, separation from uh, God came. And that was the beginning of man's sorrow. But originally, it was not so. But to God be the glory. When Jesus, when Jesus now came, went to the cross, died for us, shed his blood, what happened? We have been free. We have freedom from sin and from the consequences of, of sin. And that is why uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 2, please try and write it down so that after, after, after today, you can go over them and meditate on that scripture. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 2. What does it say? It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Look at what King James Version says. It said, there is therefore now, now, therefore now, meaning that before Jesus came, we were under condemnation because we were under sin. But the moment Jesus showed up, the moment Jesus came, and we, we, and we have surrendered our lives to him, he said, we are, he said, now, now, at the moment, at present, we are no more under any condemnation. And brethren, we need to understand what the Bible is saying. Because many Christians are still carrying about in their mind guilty conscience. The devil is plaguing them. The devil is accusing them of their past sins. And because of that, they cannot move on. They cannot progress in their Christian life. But the scripture is telling us that now, as long as we have given our life to Jesus, as long as we have said bye-bye to sin, as long as we have welcomed Jesus into our life, as long as we have received Jesus into our life by forsaking our sins, turning away from our sin, I will say, Lord Jesus, come into my, come into my life. The Bible says that no more condemnation, no more condemnation, now, let me read that scripture in, in another translation, which I call the Passion Translation. See what it says. Honestly, I love this version because it really uh, it breaks it down for us to understand. It said, so now, the, so now the case is closed. I take it again. It said, so now, 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 the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. Look at that. Hallelujah. He said, now, the case that the devil had with you is closed. He's saying that the accusation of the devil against your life, against me, because of our past life, is closed. Let me explain to you, so that you will, you will have a better understanding. Sister, uh, Sister Julie, you are welcome to tonight's fellowship. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Now, yeah. Now, I want us to have this understanding very well. Honestly, if we understand this word of God, you will, never, you will no more be a victim to Satan. You will no more be a victim to a devil. You will no more be a victim to witches and wizards. Honestly, you will not. You will be more than conqueror. You will be strong in your spirit. Mm -hmm. You will not be afraid of all these people with their dark powers. You will mm -hmm. be afraid of them if yes. you really have understanding. Now, let me explain to us, because I want us to understand when he says that, that there is no more accusing voice of condemnation against us we who are in Christ Jesus. Remember when God spoke to Moses that he should use that rock and speak to that, uh, no, 
he should smite the rock. He smote the rock. Water came forth. Because the Bible made us understand that that rock was Jesus Christ. Now, the second time that God commanded him, this time around, he didn't tell him to smite the rock. He only told, uh, he only told him to speak to the rock. Amen. You know, to speak, to speak to the rock. And then water will come out. But because the children of Israel provoked Moses, and Moses, out of annoyance, out of anger, he disobeyed God, and he smote the rock. And don't forget, that rock was Jesus. And Jesus must be smitten only once, not twice. That was the offense Moses committed. And that offense, God didn't take it lightly. God said, Moses, even the water came even the water came out. But I told you to speak, and you, and you struck. Don't you know that that rock was Jesus Christ? Jesus must die only once, not twice. Jesus must be smitten only once, not twice. You now smote him twice. And God told him, Moses, I've forgiven you, but I'm going to discipline you. And that discipline is that I will kill you. You will not get to the Canaan land. The Bible told us that Moses prayed and prayed to God. Prayed to God that God should spare him. God said, Moses, forget about that. Forget about, forget about you getting to that promised land. You will not get there. I will kill you and bury you. But I'm forgiving you. You will make heaven. So when they were almost getting to the promised land, God now told Moses, oh yeah, Moses, climb that mountain because you will not come down. Give your road to Joshua. Then you climb that mountain. And when he climbed the mountain, of course, God killed him. If I were told that nobody saw his, his dead body. But see what happened, because it was recorded in the Bible. The devil now appeared. Because the devil, to the, to, to the devil's mind, was that Moses died under judgment. So he is a candidate of hellfire. So he now came to claim the body of um, Moses to take him to hellfire. And God sent an angel to the devil. The devil, get out of this place. You cannot accuse Moses. I have forgiven him. He's going with me. He won't, he won't go with you. So God told the devil, the case of Moses, it's already closed. I have forgiven him. Even though I discipline him, but I have forgiven him. And because I have forgiven him, he is not a candidate of hellfire. That is what Jesus did for you and for me. Do you know how many people who have taken your name to the spiritual world, accusing you before the devil? Which is and wizards in their meeting. Do you know what they are saying against you? Your household enemy. Oh, Do you know what they are saying? Do you know what they are saying against you? But the Bible is saying that whatever they are saying against you, whatever is their accusation, God is saying by the Holy Spirit, your case is closed. Amen. Tell yourself, tell yourself, my case is closed. My case is closed. Jesus. I want you to say it as if you really mean it. Say, my case is closed. My, my, my case, case is closed. My case. I want you to declare it. I want you to declare and let the devil hear you that because Jesus has died for me, my case, my family case, all your accusation against me, all your accusation against me, all the accusations against my my uh, my spouse, all the accusations against my children, they are all destroyed. They are all closed. Your accusations against in the name of Jesus. Now turn into prayer. Turn into prayer. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I declare that my case is closed because Jesus Christ died for me. Every satanic 
demonic case against me. Every satanic demonic case against my wife. Every satanic demonic case against my uh, uh, my daughter special. It is forever closed because Jesus died for me. Any satanic case against Salamo too. And it's Jesus. an household. Tonight, they are closed. They are forever closed. Because Jesus has died. In the name of Jesus, every satanic accusation against our sister Julie and her household, in the name of Jesus, they are forever closed. Because Jesus has died on the cross, buried in the grave. And on the third day, he rose again. For this reason, for this reason, every case that the devil had over us because of our past life, because of our sinful past life, they are all forever closed. In the name of Jesus, they are all forever closed. In the name of Jesus, they are all forever closed. In the name of Jesus, they are all forever closed. In the name of Jesus, they are all forever closed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Brethren, please don't look at the number tonight. Look at yourself. See yourself before God. Amen. I'm telling you, if you can pray, and I can pray tonight, I'm telling you, God will visit you. God will visit me. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And Amen. there will be evidence to show for it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, number four benefit of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Through his death and his burial and his resurrection, we are free from every demonic bondage. Amen. We are also free from every curse. Amen. And that includes ancestral costs. Brethren, you must have this at the back of your mind. Because Jesus tells us in John chapter 8, verse 36, I quote, If the Son of Man shall set you free, you are free, you are free indeed. This is our Lord Jesus Christ talking. He was referring to himself. He was the Son of Man. He said, if the Son of Man, because he knew that what he would, he would get to the cross and he died on the cross, automatically, whoever that accepts him is free from every condemnation and is free from, uh, from every bondage of the devil, and is free from every ancestral cause. Before now, before now, of course, we were operating under ancestral cause. Amen. You know, in some, in some families, in some families, please, can we mute? They, they say, let us mute our speaker, you know, if there's any background. In some families, you will hear that in, this, uh, in their paternal bloodline, they don't get to the age of 40. Once they get to 40, they died. That is a ancestral cause. In some, in some families, they will say they don't get rich. Their great, great grandfather died a poor man. Their grandfather died a poor man. Their father died a poor man, and they too, they are also seeing the symptom of poverty in their life. Brethren, that is a central cause. But because you are in Christ Jesus, I am in Christ Jesus, we shouldn't be carrying that ancestral cause again. Amen. Because Jesus Christ went to the cross. He died on the cross. Look at what the Bible says. Christ redeemed us from every self-defeating caused life. Christ redeemed us. He did not say Christ may redeem us. He didn't say 
Christ will redeem us. He didn't say Christ can redeem us. He says Christ has redeemed us. It's a past tense. It, he has already done it. It's something that he has done over 2,000 years ago. Christ has already redeemed us. And because he has redeemed us, if you can believe that Jesus went to the cross, if I can believe that Jesus went to the cross, and I actually believe it, and I know it, that yes, I agree, I, I, I know that Jesus went to the cross, he died on the cross, then you don't have any business with ancestral cause. Amen. You don't have any business with any terminal disease. They say, you know, uh, there's a terminal disease in our, in our bloodline. You don't have any business with a terminal, uh, a terminal uh, disease. And if there's any trace of the devil in your life, that thing, that sickness, that infirmity, that thing, that evil thing made a mistake. That thing made a very big mistake. Tell yourself tonight, because Jesus has set me free through his blood, therefore I am free. Indeed. Can you declare it? Because Jesus Christ has set me free through his blood. Therefore, I decree and I declare that I am free indeed. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Oh, Lord, I declare, oh, Lord, I am free. Oh, my because Christ Jesus has shed his blood for me. He has paid the price for me. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I and my household, we are free indeed. Yes, say, we are free indeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, remember, I want you to put this word into your heart. And if you have a Bible there, please write it down. The statement I'm about to make now, write it down. Note it. Think about it. Ponder over it. Whatever free indeed means to you is what you will experience in life. I will repeat it again. Whatever free indeed means to you is what you will experience in life. Whatever. That phrase, free indeed, because Jesus said, if the Son of Man shall set you free, you will be free indeed. Whatever it means to you, that phrase, free indeed, is exactly what you will experience in life. Amen. But if, but if you are wise, if I am wise, I will have the understanding of that word, free indeed, the same understanding Jesus had. Because I believe that Jesus who made that statement, he, he understood what he was saying. When he said that, if the Son of Man shall set you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. I remember on the cross, he did not die until when he was, uh, it, it, was uh, it was not certain, when he was not satisfied that yes, the work of redemption is completely executed. When he saw that everything has been accomplished, he now made a statement. One of the last statements he made was, it is finished. And what does that mean to you? It is finished. What does that, what does that it stand for? Anything evil in your life. Poverty, yes. Permanent sickness, yes. Ancestral cause, yes. Demonic oppression, yes. That is what Jesus meant. He saw while he was there in pain, in agony, blood gushing out on the cross, stretched, suspended. He did not die until when it was heaven now said, yes, everything accomplished. He now said, it is finished. Then he now said, Father, I commend my spirit 
unto you. Then he bowed his head and he died. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I want us to spend a few minutes or a few seconds to worship this Jesus. Just to worship what he did on the cross. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know that when after 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 that, when he was put in the grave, the third day, he rose. When he rose, when Mary, Mary Madeline was about to go and touch him, when she realized that it was Jesus, what, what did Jesus tell him? He said, mm -mm, Mary, don't touch me yet. Don't touch me yet. I, I have to go and report myself before the Almighty God. Don't touch me yet. Because in my hand, I'm holding the sample of the blood that I shed for your redemption, for the redemption of humanity. I have to go and present it before the Father. And he went to heaven. And the Father saw him. And he said, Daddy, the work you gave to me, I have accomplished it. This is the, this is the evidence in my hand. The blood that I shed. And the Father took that blood and the Father put it on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, brethren, look at what Jesus did for you. Look at what Jesus did for me. I want you to just spend a few seconds and worship him. Pick a song that you like just to worship him for what he did. Look at that blood, fresh blood, right, on the, on the, uh, right in the mercy seat. Don't forget, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, it was the blood of animal that they would put on the physical mercy seat. It was the physical, uh, 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 it was the animal blood. But during our own time, when Jesus came, God didn't use the blood of animal. He used the precious blood of his own son. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, that blood is on the ark, is, is on the ark of covenant before God on the mercy seat. And that is why when you pray, when I pray, God will look through the blood to see you. And that's why we are told that that before in Christ Jesus we are righteous for God. In Christ Jesus we are righteous. God sees us as a righteous person. He does not see us as unrighteous. We are in Christ Jesus. Because you told me your mother because to pray. Say, Syria, how long will you? Of a tofi molesh and show. Monica be a Syria, how long will you? Baba, oh, Baba, 
The Bible says that Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the law, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon me, the Gentile, and I am a Gentile. And because I'm a Gentile and I've given my life to Christ, therefore I now become a bona fide heir of Abraham. I now have access to Abrahamic blessing. I'm also as important as Israel. Amen. Yes, before God in Christ Jesus. So it is high time the earlier you also begin to think in this direction, the better. Because, Amen. brethren, we need to unlearn what we have been fed with all these years. And we need to relearn. We must throw away all those junk that we have been fed with and begin to take in what God is saying. Information. What does it mean? Information means something that forms you from the inside. What we have been hearing all this while, which has been negative, was what formed us inside out. You will hear a word like this, poor me. Ah, poor me. Things are very, oh, poor me, poor me. Can you imagine? Why can't you not say, reach me, wealth me? Begin to change that your vocabulary to reach me. <laughs> yes. That's what I tell myself. I say, I am rich. I am, I am, I am wealthy. It is what you call yourself. It is what you perceive about yourself that you will, you will eventually experience. As the man thinks in his heart, so he is. And what you say with your mouth, align with what is in your mind, is what you are going to experience. If you say that you are still Jesus. operating under, you are still under a ancestral cause, even though Jesus Christ has paid the price for us, well, nothing Jesus can do again. Nothing, the Father, nothing our Father God can do again. Say, so, well, since that's your, that's your perception, since, since that's your belief, that's your belief, it's okay. So let it be unto you as we have said it. Let it be unto you as we have perceived it. God forbid. From today, every negativity that you, are, that you have been fed with, tonight, the blood of Jesus to wipe them off. Amen. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Out tonight. Life in Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. You are going to declare again. You are going to declare again. Because Jesus Christ has died for me, I am free from mention it. Is it poverty? Mention it now. Jesus. Is it sickness? Mention it now. Is it stagnation in life? Mention Lord. it now. Hey, what? Because Jesus Christ has died for me. He has shed his blood for me. Therefore, I am free from sin. Amen. 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 I am free from poverty. I am free from spiritual poverty. I am free from financial poverty. I am free from mental poverty. In the name of Jesus. Yes, mental poverty. I am free from you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my coat is la cata ya. Donde le placo sadamo zanti amoko tolia. Makatolia araka sada. Anything they put their hand on, the Lord, positive and positive, it be their portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stagnation, no terminal disease in my body. In the name of Jesus. Elekata, burota, asondua. My coat is la paraco seti eli mozantu. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number five benefit. Through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, we are being empowered to dominate life circumstances and challenges. Through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, we are being empowered to dominate life circumstances and challenges. Remember, 
Adam and Eve, before they fell into sin, they were dominating. They dominated everything in life, including the devil. But the moment the devil lured them into disobeying God, they became dominated. Do you see it now? They became dominated. They became dominated. I will read Colossians chapter 2, 14 to 15. I read. Blotting out the unwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to, the, to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Look at it. What Jesus did. When Jesus was on the cross, hmm, while he was receiving all those latches, being scourged, 39 stripes, and each, each whip carrying 12 stripes, multiplied 39 by, uh, by 12. And the Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Almost 480 stripes he received. Almost 480 stripes he received. You know? While he was going through that, when he was being nailed to the cross, spiritually, see what was happening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See what was happening. Every handwriting of the devil against you, against me, because of our past life, Christ Jesus was blotting them out, you know? And, and we're told that he was nailing them to the cross. As they were nailing him, my sickness was being nailed to the cross. Amen. As they were nailing him, my poverty was being nailed to the cross. Amen. As they were nailing him, my, uh, every evil, all my ancestral causes were being nailed to the cross. Amen. Now, if that was what happened, then why am I still burdening myself with ancestral cause today? Mm. Why am I allowing my mind to be filled with that I'm still under ancestral cause? Why? Who is telling lies? Myself or Jesus or the Holy Spirit that says that blotting out the unwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing them to the cross. In fact, see what the Bible says. He said, to his cross. Jesus nailed it to his own cross. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. Lord, we love you. Love you Lord. Hallelujah. And in verse 15, having spoiled when Jesus died, while he was being nailed to the cross. Have we forgotten what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 15? He said, you, Satan, you will bruise the heel of Jesus, but Jesus will bruise your head. While he was being nailed to the cross, that was the heel that they were bruising, the lowest part of his body. But Jesus Christ in the spirit realm was railing stones from heaven upon the head of the devil it and is. his cohorts. Yes, that was what happened. And, and the Bible told us, say, he has reduced the devil to non-entity. That's the meaning of having spoiled principalities and powers. That is, he reduced them to non-entity. He reduced the devil, the principal agent of the dark power. He, re he reduced him to a non-entity, to zero. Why are you afraid of cockroach, cockroach in your dream? Why are you afraid of a small, small animals in your dream? When their master, the devil, Jesus Christ had crushed him already. Amen. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Brethren, you. listen to me. Just li 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 listen to this information, which I want to pass to us now. Just listen. When Jesus died on the cross, brethren, please take note. Very, very important. 
When Jesus died on the cross, he went straight to paradise, which was then located underneath the ground, called Hades in Greece, because all the saints from Adam to the thief that was nailed along with him on the cross, who eventually got repented. When Jesus went there, he went there to liberate them. And he now moved paradise from that underneath the ground. He moved it to heaven above. Hallelujah. Amen. It's in the Bible. Where the, the Bible said that when Jesus rose, all the saints that died from Adam till up to the thief, they also resurrected, they resurrected with him. And we're told that they appeared unto the brethren in, uh, in Israel. They saw them. They saw Father Abraham. They saw Father Jacob. They saw Father Isaac. They saw King David. Before eventually, he took them to heaven. Because he has moved paradise from underneath the ground to heaven above. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. No wonder when Jesus came to his, to, his, to his disciples. He said, you disciples, don't be afraid again. Now I have risen. I've been given all the powers in heaven on earth. It's given unto me. Based on this information I'm giving you, go therefore and go and declare the good news to everyone that I, Jesus, I have the power. The devil does not have any power again. I have stripped him naked. I have reduced him to non entity. He has nothing again. Now go in this name, Jesus, begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. And this reminds me on the 26th of January, 1982. 26th of January, 1982. I had a dream. And in that dream, I heard this voice, and I'm sure it was the voice of God, saying to me that the purpose of my calling is that the purpose of my calling is that Jesus might continue his work through me. That the purpose of my calling is that Jesus might continue his work through me. And First John chapter three verse eight, the B part flashed into my mind, which says, "For this purpose." Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And that gave me a picture of my assignment. And that's why, and that's why you can see why all the time I always attack the enemy, attack the enemy. Yes, this is my assignment. Every trace of the devil in your life, because Jesus has risen, I command it destroyed. In the name of Jesus, I declare you free from every bondage of the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command it. I Amen. command you free. Amen. I Amen. command Amen. you liberated from Amen. every trace of the devil Amen. in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, tonight you must know that you are now an enforcer. Just like just as we have law enforcement Amen. agents, just as we have law enforcement agents, what do they do? They are being empowered to enforce the law over every defaulter. So you should also know as well that God has also made you a law enforcement agent. God has made me a law enforcement agent of heaven to enforce the, my redemptive rights and my benefit and the benefits into my life and family. So as you are here, God expects you to enforce what Christ has accomplished in your life and your family. Brethren, and this is the secret. This is the missing link. This is the missing link. Many of us are too lazy to pray. And that's the problem. And that's why on this platform, 
you will pray and I will pray. Amen. And that is why God has raised this platform up. We call it Revival Prayer Movement, where we move things in the spirit realm into reality. What we mean is that we want to enforce, we want to enforce what Christ has accomplished, we want to enforce our redemptive right and our redemptive benefits, which we have highlighted. There are, there are so many of them, but that will not permit us. Yeah. But we want to enforce them into our life and into our family and into the life of people. We are going to pray, brethren. And this is the prayer point. Father Lord, empower me this day to enforce my redemptive right and benefits into my life and family. I take it again. Father Lord, empower me this day to enforce my redemptive right and benefits into my life and family. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the me of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the Lord, empower us this day, Father. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I pray, Father. My God, I pray, Father. My Lord, I pray, Father. I pray, Father. My Lord, I pray, Father. My Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray, Father. Lord, Father. Lord, to enforce, Father, our, our redemptive right, our benefit, Father, into our life, Lord, and our family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, empower us. Father, empower us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, empower us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, declare all of your in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Empower me, oh Lord. Empower my family. Empower me in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we look up to you this moment. Father, yes, we have had, oh Lord, this short ministration, this short word of exhortation, Father. We have been able to highlight, oh Lord, Father, the benefit of Easter. We have been able to see, oh Lord, God of glory, the purpose for which Jesus Christ came into the world. Father, we are asking you tonight, Father, because you have made us an enforcer. You have made us a law enforcement agent of heaven. Father, therefore, yes, Father, yes. we ask, O oh Lord, Baba, come and empower us this day, Lord, Father, that we will be able to enforce, yes. Father, Lord, our redemptive yes. right and our redemptive benefit, yes. Father, into our lives and Amen. into the life of our loved ones. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do not be anyone Amen. in our that the devil has been hosting him that he has been having a, a nightmares having bad dreams of untimely death Father Oh, I command over him out of out of your life, Jesus. Oh, my God, he left like us. Soon the lay a book at that. Father, whatever, oh Lord, is it? Amen. Ailment ailment of the devil. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and I declare that we will all live, Father, to fulfill our destiny here on earth in the name of Jesus. None of us, Father, and our loved ones, Father, will die a premature death in the name of Jesus. All these diseases, all these infirmities that are 
can't fast today, cancer, cervical cancer, cancer of, uh, of the lung or cancer of the breast, all those deadly sicknesses, diabetes or HIV or whatever they call them, Father, they will not come near us because we are in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ Jesus because we are in Christ Jesus. Father, in heaven, every ancestral cause. Should there be any man, any woman, anybody, anyone in our midst who is suffering from ancestral cause, I command that power of that ancestral cause to die now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven. Yes, Lord. Isaac slept that night and woke up the next day and found himself on the throne. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray that we also, as we're about to go to bed, we shall yes. go to bed tonight and we shall wake up, O oh Lord God, Father, and receive a good news, Father, either in form of SMS or WhatsApp or a visitation, Lord God of glory, and our entire life, Father, will be transformed, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we too will get to our own throne of blessing, to our own throne of, of prosperity, in the name of Jesus. Father, in heaven, we are asking, oh Lord, that every of our destiny help us. Oh Lord, Father, right now, I command them, because Jesus has died for us, here we are, favor should be good to follow us right now. Therefore, I command favor to be good to, I compel you favor to be good to work for us, work with us and work for us in the name of Jesus. And right now, oh Lord, I command that Father, all our helpers of destiny, let them be good to gravitate towards us now in the name of Jesus. I command it. It's a command. Amen. Amen. Lord, I command our destiny helpers, our Amen. destiny helpers, let them be good to gravitate towards us. Amen. Um, as those species were gravitating towards the net of Peter, and I also command all our sins. We command you now, begin to gravitate towards where we are in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Daddy, we appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.